In today's video, I'm gonna show you a camera movement that will be following the arrow. So I think this one is gonna be perfect for you to incorporate it in your work. So with that being said, I'm gonna take you straight to After Effects and show you how it's done. All right, so we're back in the software and the first thing I'm gonna do is create the text. That will be our starting point. So I'm just gonna type in start, recenter, and then we're gonna create a new camera. So I'm gonna quickly do that. So note camera, 35 millimeter preset, hit okay. Then create a new null object, parent the camera to the null, and we're gonna rename it. And by the way, here you have the comp settings. I'm just gonna quickly change the color and also we're gonna turn on the 3D. So the first thing we need to do is keyframe positioning in cam control one. Now I'm gonna move it forward and we're just gonna move backwards. Now let's select both and we're gonna apply the mid graph. Okay, it's extremely slow. I think the comp could be a bit shorter so it's not confusing me. Okay, so we're just gonna do it like that. All right, so this is our base and the next thing we need to do is create the arrow. So for this, I'm gonna grab the pen tool. I'm gonna create a point here, hold shift, create another one here. And something I like doing is creating the arrow manually, but first we need to turn off the fill color and we're gonna turn on the stroke. So from this position, I'm just gonna do something like that then maybe like that and we're gonna go back to the middle probably not the best arrow you have ever seen but it will still do the job so now what i'm gonna do is head over to properties so i'm gonna open it up again go to add trim paths open it up keyframe and move it forward and we're gonna change it to zero percent i'm gonna select both easy ease and that's what we have so now we can turn that arrow into 3d and what i'm gonna do is click r change the rotation to 90 degrees actually you know what negative 90. we're gonna move it to the left just like that probably put it a bit upwards i'm gonna adjust with arrow keys and now what i want to do is kind of follow the movement of the line so since it's starting somewhere at this position we kind of want to duplicate cam control one hit you delete the last keyframe move it forward then parent one to two and we're just gonna go towards the left i'm gonna select both apply the mid graph again let's see way too early so we need to adjust the timing now we need to see the keyframes for the arrow and what i'm gonna do is just try to match the movement i'm gonna select both and apply the same graph okay i kind of like it to be honest and then what i'm gonna do is duplicate start and we're gonna move it towards the left i'm gonna rename it to mid because probably bump up the scale also something i really like doing is playing around with y rotation to add a little bit of depth maybe a little bit of z and also x i'm gonna scale it down a bit pretty much perfect and then from this position we're gonna do pretty much the same i'm just gonna duplicate cam control 2 hit you delete the last keyframe power into 3 and we're gonna move downwards okay i'm gonna select both and we're just gonna apply the same graph as before pretty cool but it's too slow we can open up keyframes in cam control 2 for reference i'm just thinking maybe we should go a little bit lower with that keyframe so i'm just gonna go lower with y position and also i'm gonna extend it so it's not that sharp Okay, pretty much perfect. I'm gonna rename it to arrow and we're gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna hit you and we're gonna try to adjust the keyframes over here. Okay, let's say we're gonna trim it here so we know where's the starting position and we're just gonna drag it right here. Now we need to change the rotation to minus 180 and we're just gonna put it like that. Okay, pretty cool. It's too early though. So here we need to offset the keyframes a little bit and play around. We could probably adjust it manually so i'm just gonna hit g on the keyboard click that point drag it like that and then move the whole thing upwards okay let's see oh nice now i'm gonna duplicate start put it above the mid we're gonna recenter it by hitting Control alt home i believe i have a different shortcut and we're just gonna put it here let me rename it to finish okay so that's how it's looking so far and we want to adjust the timing of all of these. So we're just going to bump up the scale, then hit T, and we're going to fade it in. Like that. Okay, so that's pretty cool. But we also need to fade in mid, so we can copy these keyframes. And I'm going to paste them somewhere here. We can hit U, and we can trim the layer. Also this one. Just so we have extra depth, I'm going to use Pro-Edit Pack. And I'm going to drop in one of the backgrounds over there. Probably something like Black BG3, one of my favorites. So it has a nice animation in the beginning and then the glow is kind of passing by. So for this, we need to turn it into 3D, drop it underneath the text, recenter, and I'm going to move it away with position and scale it up. Then we're going to apply exposure and we're going to decrease the value. So it's barely noticeable. We kind of want to focus on the text, but this is going to give us extra depth. So that's pretty dope. I'll probably move it closer to the scene so there's more movement and then scale it down. Okay, we definitely need to 
have it somehow like that. And then the glow is going from down to up. So what we could do is just hit R and I'm going to change the rotation to 180. It's going to match the scene a bit more. Ooh, nice. Okay, pretty cool. We can add an intense shake to transform. So we're just going to go to camera, alt click point of interest, type in wiggle. And this time we're going to go for like 3,10 maybe. Let's just see. I really like it. I would probably go for an even bigger number and then go to 9. And one more thing we could do is just go to the first cam control and we're gonna move away for a little bit extra movement. Okay, now we need to turn on the motion blur and guess what we're gonna try. I'm gonna add posterized time. Let's change it to 16 and let's see. And what do you say? It's not looking that bad here. Hmm? The only thing is that I feel like I went overboard with that shake, so we're just gonna change it to like 2.5 and let's go for 12. And maybe let's add exposure on top, so we're just gonna create a new adjustment layer. We're gonna alt click, type in wiggle, and in brackets we're gonna add 8,0.2. Just a little bit of blinking effect. And also maybe to the mid, I'm gonna add deep glow. I'm just kind of curious. So here we have posterized time, then exposure, and we also need vignette. All right, let's see. I'm just gonna delete that deep glow. I don't really like it here, to be honest. And the last adjustment of the whole animation is just adjusting the position over here. So the finish is in the middle. All right, we got such a beautiful animation. Let's just see without posterized time. All right, you tell me what's better. I feel like posterized time was way better. So here we got the final effect and I'm really trying my best to improve your skills as a video editor. So hopefully you don't slack off. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap it up here and I will see you tomorrow. Cheers, guys.